All right, guys, in today's video, I got this genuine GM compressor that we just recently replaced off a vehicle. This is a Delphi CVC6 style. This is what GM used from 2002 to around 2010. And I thought it would be useful to show you how to replace the clutch assembly. The main part of the compressor on these years is going to be the same, and the part that will vary will be this pulley part. It might have a different number of ribs. It might be a different diameter. There's also two different connector styles for the electromagnetic coil. But the removal and reinstallation is pretty much the same. In the video description, I'll list all the GM compressor numbers by engine. Like this one came off of an Ecotec 2.2 liter. Um, the 2.0 has a different part number compressor because this front assembly is different, for example. So how do we get this off? Well, and you can do this on the vehicle, by the way, without having to pull the refrigerant. I just had this here like this, and so that's all I'm showing you. Um, normally, what you would have are some holes to use a tool like this, and these pegs would fit into those holes. But for some reason, this particular one, those holes are filled in with some type of uh, rubber. And you know, I don't want to necessarily force them out. So if you have that kind of a problem, I was thinking, well, you know, how would you show somebody how to get that off? You've got to get this T30 type fastener here off of there, uh, Torx fastener. And in order to do that, you've got to keep it from rotating, this outer part of the clutch. So I'm going to try just using a really large channel wrench and grabbing this triangular plate since we can't use the appropriate tool because it's plugged off. I'm going to see if we can use this to do it. Just trying to get it into a good position where I can hold it without damaging anything. All right, that looks good. Let's see if we can just get it off by hand or we're going to have to give it a, a hit. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I felt it turn. We'll just switch to a ratchet. They're not normally this hard to get off. This particular compressor, though, is uh, a good 18 or so years old. Let's see if we can sit it up a little bit, get a little bit more leverage on it. Okay. Now, if that guy off of there, this outer clutch can come off. What you normally have happen in the operation is when you turn on the AC and the relay and all the circuitry is working properly, it'll energize this electromagnetic, electromagnetic coil that's underneath this guy. This is all steel, so it'll become magnetized. And that'll pull this plate onto here, and by friction, that's what allows it to turn the compressor. To get the pulley assembly off, you can see there's a snap ring here. Let's see if these pair will work first. Keep your finger down here to keep this guy from flying. Actually, I'm going to try a smaller one. And these are usually uh, directional, so you want to make sure you keep the side up that was up to begin with. And then the pulley assembly will slide off. Inside is the bearing. This is typically why you would be replacing this, is because the bearing has given out on you. And then here's the electromagnetic coil. There's another snap ring holding this guy on at the bottom there. And 
Nope, that's too big again. Let's try with the smaller one. There's that guy, and then this comes off. And that's the assembly that you have. Now, older GM compressors, each of these pieces would be separately serviceable, but on these Delphi CVC6 types, this piece is common to all of them, and then these pieces will vary, and there will be a different kit for different vehicles. Like I told you, like some of them will have a different connector, and so because of that, the whole kit part number will be different. If you need a new coil or you need a new bearing or for some reason this got damaged and you need a new one of these, you have to buy the whole enchilada. So in the video description, based on the different compressor part numbers for the different engines, I'll give you the part number for these different clutch kits and it'll have all these pieces in the kit and to put it back together, you just reverse what I just showed you, right? You'll put this guy on first, then this snap ring, you put this guy on second, then this snap ring, and then you'll put this guy on last, and then you'll put this bolt on here. Let me go show you the service manual view of what we just did so that you can get an idea for how it compares to what I showed you. All right, just showing you the service manual view, you can see they would have normally used that tool like I was talking about. There's supposed to be some holes for that. They even mentioned that you can install three bolts in place of those dowels to help hold it on. But in our case, they were plugged off. So I showed you an alternate way to get to this point. Then just like I showed you, the plate comes off, remove the snap ring, and the pulley comes off, remove the remaining snap ring, and the coil comes off. And then to install it, they, they just caution you to you know check out the threads and make sure the thread that that T30 goes into is clean and okay. You can blow that out with some compressed air, then put the clutch back on the compressor. And again, you, you got to take note of the orientation of the connector so it lines up with the wiring harness length on your particular engine. Put the snap ring back in, put the coil back on, put the snap ring back in, put the plate back on, and then you got to adjust the air gap between the plate and the pulley assembly. And they're telling you you want to get that between 0.012 and 0.024 thousandths of an inch. And at that point, you can um, put this bolt back on to 9 inch pounds. You can see it's not supposed to be on that tight, but uh, just some corrosion was holding ours on. And I believe that is it. Yep, that's the end of the procedure. So the last thing I'm going to show you, we're going to go back to the unit. We're going to put it back together, and I'll show you how to set this air gap. All right, you want to make sure this is really cleaned before you put it back together. The connector's going to sit in this little crevice here with the boss right there. It's going to kind of sit just like that. All right, and I'm going to kind of wedge this guy in between my legs here. If you're working on the vehicle or you're using it in a vise, you won't have this problem. We've got to put the snap ring back in. And the particular snap ring pliers I'm using are just a hair too small for this job. They just don't open quite the distance we need to to get both sides of this thing in. Hopefully we can still work it in, despite that limitation. Now what I'm trying not to do is you do not want to put any tools along this polished area that the bearing sits. So for this particular problem we've got here, I do not want to do that. There we go. All right, she's in. 
So this whole polished area is where this guy's going to ride, and it has to stay polished. All right, so this guy's going to go back on like that. And again, when you're if you're putting an old one on, you want to do like this and make sure there's no um, gritty feeling, no vibration, and no noise, and it spins freely just like that. That's a good bearing. Now, when we were taking all this apart, I didn't mention this to you, but you can see there's another snap ring in here. And this inside snap ring, if you're working on the vehicle, you do not want to touch because this is holding in the shaft seal. If you take this one off, all the refrigerant is going to shoot out and you can get seriously injured. So that one you leave alone. But the reason I'm highlighting it is both for the safety reason and for it's a good idea to put a refrigerant sniffer on here to make sure this guy's not leaking because sometimes you have a problem with this pulley assembly or this coil but you might also have a bad seal. And if you've got that, you might as well just replace the whole unit. You can replace these seals, but at some point, it's diminishing returns. All right, so the next thing is that little threaded end to the shaft. So they told us in the service manual they wanted us to chase those threads with an M6 by one tap. So that's what we're going to do right here. We're just going to run this guy in by hand. Just going to grab a little teeny tiny crescent wrench to give us the ability to turn it. And we just want to chase all those threads all the way down because this should not have a lot of resistance. Get all that corrosion that's in there out. All the way down. All right, so at the point when the shaft starts turning, back it out. Use some compressed air, just since we're working out here. Just got a little bit in a can. Doesn't matter where your air comes from, as long as it's air. All right, so now, I'm gonna clean out this little area here. And we're gonna put this snap ring back in. Again, keep your finger on these. They will go flying. And you, get, you both don't want to lose them as well as you don't want to have any kind of eye injury or anything like that. Okay, that guy's in. Just want to make sure. I like to kind of give them a little twist to make sure they move inside the groove. All right, so now all this assembly is back together. Now, they talked about these shims for the air gap. And we can see there's one inside here. They like a little washer. Right, that's what they're talking about when they talk about the shims. And so there's one on this one from the factory. And if for some reason you needed more, you'd put them in here and stack them, right? So this guy's gonna go on like that. And we're gonna take our T30, try to get some of this corrosion off of here. You can also put it on a wire wheel. I mean, this is just demonstration, guys. If I was putting this on a real vehicle, I'd wire wheel this off. Yeah, that's going in nice and easy now. All right, and then what they were talking about, the air gap, they want you to take a feeler gauge. And let's see, it started off, I think, at 12 thousandths. You know, 12 thousandths is fine. Lost my place, 13. Let's try 14. 14 is snug, 15. Snugger, 16 thousandths on the feeler gauge. 
very snug, very snug. So you don't want to force this in because it's on a spring, right? If you force it in, you're going to force it out. So you just want to see what snugly fits in there. So this one is somewhere between 15 and 16 thousandths. So that air gap is within specification. At this point, we would torque up this T30 and we're done. So that is how on a Delphi CVC6 style GM compressor that you disassemble and reassemble the clutch assembly. I hope this helps you out. I'll put parts, uh, part numbers and links to them in the video description based on the engine type, like I mentioned, the Ecotec 2.2 and the Ecotec 2.0 liter engines. If you've got questions or comments, leave them below and I'll try to help. If this helped, saved you some money and taught you how to do something, or if you just found it interesting, pay it forward and hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. And as always, thanks for watching.